Hey Vortex Nation, Ruben with Vortex Optics here. Today we're back uh, in the manual machine shop at Vortex and what we're doing is we're going to be going through how to mount a red dot to a pistol. So I guess when you would, when you would look and ask the question, why am I going to mount a red dot to a pistol? It has iron sights. Well, red dots are easier to pick up. You know, at longer distances, it's easier to be more precise and heck, they're just fun to use. So to start out, I guess what I'll say is we're going to go through a bunch of different types of applications. So we're going to talk about basically you have optics ready pistols that are coming from a factory. Then you've got a full custom slide or have a gunsmith um, mill out a slide for your red dot. You could then look at um, just a, a pistol that you don't really want to modify, like just a standard off the shelf pistol that doesn't have a, a slide cut. And then finally, we could go into some things about frame mounts. So to start out, we're going to go with kind of really what's popular right now, the optics ready. So you have um, really popular options. You have a Glock MOS. You have the FN, FNX 45 Tactical. You've got the Walther Q5 Match, um, the M&P Pro from Smith & Wesson, the new Springfield XDM. Um, they have their OSP model. And then there's a Sentry Arms Canic um, TP9 SFX. So there's a bunch of options that you can just go to your local gun shop, buy the pistol, and throw an optic on it. So when we talk about what are your options from Vortex, you've got our Razor Red Dot, which has been a really solid option, you know, really popular with competition shooters, hunters alike, and just the everyday plinker. We have our newer Venom and Viper Red Dots, which are... Honestly, for the money, just phenomenal options. They're rock solid. The durability has been awesome on them. And um, like every Vortex product, you know, all of our red dots are backed by our VIP warranty. So even though they have an electronic component to them, there's really no worries on them what happens to it. So um, when we look at the, you know, like looking at an optics-ready pistol, like the MOS from Glock or the M&P Pro from Smith & Wesson, the pro core, sorry. Um, they all are going to have like an adapter plate. So you have different optics like the Viper and Venom, which are going to fit that Doctor or um, Burris Fast Fire mounting pattern for the, the bolt and the, the mounting, the indexing studs. Um, and then the Razor is going to fit the same pattern as like a Seymour RTS or an STS. And luckily, a lot of these guns from the factory are coming with the, the proper adapter plates or the proper mounting plate to do that. So um, on the Glock, you've got four different plates. They come with plate one, two, three, and four. Um, for the Viper and the Venom, you're going to use plate number zero, one. For the, the Razor, you're going to use plate number three. Now on the FN 45 Tactical, um, this one, the only two Vortex red dots you're going to be able to mount are the Viper and Venom because they do come with uh, the, the, the Burris Fast Fire plate. So one other thing I want to mention to everybody is if you have questions, please shoot them out to us. Um, we got Jimmy over there. Um, he did the last live event. Jimmy's got you guys covered for questions, so write in you know, on the Facebook page. Just shoot Jimmy your questions, and he'll get them over to me. So I'll do my best to answer them on the clock. Um, the Walther Q5 match, that one also is going to only be able to be used with our Venom or Viper Red Dot. Um, and then you have the M&P Core, uh, which is the same story. So to jump right in, I guess with what I want to say is we can, we can show you how to do this, and it's really simple. Um, on the M&P Pro Core, you've got our adapter plate, which it comes with three or four different adapter plates. But we're going to use the one um, for the Fast Fire or Dr. Red Dot. You simply take off the protective cover, you take your adapter plate, it indexes right on. There's only one right way to do this, and there's only one way that it'll actually fit. So you'll take the screws, uh, I believe there's the, the kit number five screws that come with the core, and you set that red dot right on. There's some indexing studs on the frame and on the adapter. And then we'll take our Vortex uh, torque wrench, which is available on vortexoptics.com. What we're going to do is we're going to run this torque wrench set between 10 and 12 inch pounds. We don't need to use a lot of torque and we don't need to use Loctite. Now, for you guys who want to use Loctite, you can, but just keep in mind, when you use Loctite, it lubricates the threads and we don't want to use a full torque value then. So back it down just a little bit. So all we do, once we've got it indexed on there, I'll put the torque tool right in. 
we'll thread it down. Again, 10 to 12 inch pounds is plenty. And then that torque wrench is going to break over when it's got it set properly. Um, I had it preset here, so once we've got it in there, breaks over. We've got proper torque on it. Um, one thing I will mention with a lot of these optics ready uh, pistols, you can co witness your iron sights with the dot. Now, the core, the venom is a little tall, but the Viper um, is actually the perfect height for co witnessing. So, if you were to want to co witness your irons, you're going to use the Viper. So, we've already got it done on one of the optics ready models. That just kind of goes to show how easy and quick it was. Um, that one's ready to go to the range. Slap it back on the pistol and you're set. So, <clears throat> moving uh, again, just kind of re intro here. Um, I'm Ruben with Vortex Optics. We're back here in the manual machine shop at Vortex, and we're just going through how to mount um, any any micro red dot, or we'll get into other red dots too, but mounting a micro red dot onto a pistol. So, And right now we're talking about slide mounting. So we're going to go into what, what I would call you know a custom aftermarket slide, like companies from Blitz Customs or... Um, Jaeger Works or Agency Arms, Springer Precision, companies like that. Um, or you could go into a full custom slide. Um, so here's, here's what one would look like from uh, a gunsmith that modified it. And then here's a new full custom slide from Voodoo Innovations. Really cool stuff coming from these guys. You know, they got all the relief cuts. They got all the, you know, all the racking assist cuts that are, give you better grip so you can rack it with, you know, on your pant leg or whatever you want to do. But both of these slides are, are different from an optics-ready slide because they've been machined to fit a specific red dot. So when we talk about that, you know, I know this Voodoo slide, uh, this Voodoo slide here comes ready for the Viper red dot. And this M&P that we sent out, this one is also ready for the Viper red dot. So what these shops will do is they'll take and they'll make the cuts into the slide that fit the proper... Um, profile of the red dot they know what they're doing guys so this isn't something you want to do uh, you know just don't go back to your your manual mill and start cutting on the slide because you know a lot of these guns have safety features built into the slide like an M&P or a Glock they have a plunger that actually presses down on the trigger components that prevents you from firing that gun when you don't want to fire it so if you take that and you go over to your manual mill and you start cutting on it and um, cutting that slide profile, it doesn't matter how perfect the red dot fits. If you cut into the safety components, that gun's no longer useful. So, and it's actually dangerous. So, we'll go into this M&P, and what we're going to do is we're going to mount our Viper red dot on it. So, as you can see, this one's been cut. Again, we don't need to put Loctite on it, but if you want to, you could. Um, again, I have that 10 to 12 inch pounds set, and these screws are perfect for this this uh, optic. You know the there is some screws that, depending on the optic, you'll want to make sure you have the, the right ones. So um, make sure you got the right screws. Make sure you got the right torque. And that one bolts right on. And as you can see, as is different from an optics-ready model from the factory, this one's got the perfect profile for our Viper Red Dot. So it fits in there, um, very aesthetically pleasing, and that's, that's a really cool option. Now, one thing I will say is these are permanent modifications to your gun. So this isn't something that you're going to send out and then, you know, get it back later and be able to change it back to, to normal. So looks like we've got a question coming in from Jimmy. Hey, Rube. So uh, Mark, and I'm, I'm going to butcher his last name, but Mark just asked, uh, can you discuss the co-witness height of each red dot? For example, does the Viper work best with suppressor height sights or standard? factory and thanks. Yeah, so great question Mark. Um, there are, it's going to be different, right? So there's no one size fits all, okay? So it, with your with your optics ready models, the M&P Pro Core, that one, you know, your Viper is going to fit perfectly. You're going to co-witness with the Viper out of the box, the M&P Core, uh, Pro Core out of the box. So that, that's, that gun though does come with suppressor height sights. Now your Glock MOS doesn't come with suppressor height sights. It comes with the, the low um, polymer Glock sights. Um, so you're really not going to get a co-witness unless you would go with our lowest sight, which is the Viper. 
and then a, a set of extra tall suppressor height sights. I know the ones from Ameriglow are really good. Um, they're actually very tall, and excess sights make some really great stuff. So shout out to Monty down in Texas. Um, so the FNX 45 Tactical 2 um, with the Viper Red Dot, you're going to be able to co-witness. The Venom Red Dot and the Razor are taller, so the body actually sits higher on the slide. So the Venom is about 1.3 millimeters shorter than, or the Viper is 1.3 millimeters shorter than the Venom, and the Razor is even taller yet. So if you were to want to co-witness with either the Venom or the Razor, that's kind of where that custom aftermarket work from a, from a, you know, either a, either a custom slide, full custom from Adams or Lone Wolf or um, Primary Weapons makes one, ZevTech makes a ton of slides, or send your, you know, your factory gun to a gunsmith and have them do it. But what they're going to do is they're going to take into account the height of the red dot, and then they're going to have to either raise or lower the cut into the slide based on what red dot you're using. So when you go with a full custom job like that or have a gunsmith you know, modify, modify your current slide, that's where you're going to have to be really specific. And it's a tough decision because you have to decide on that day what red dot am I going to use, what pistol am I going to use, and it's going to be permanent. So the co-witness generally comes from the lower, you know, the lower sitting optics like the Viper. Um, I know the Venom can on some if you do use extra tall suppressor height sights because there are different heights of suppressor height sights. So hopefully that answers your question, Mark. Um, keep questions coming, guys. I like to hear them, and I'll do my best to answer them on the clock. Another question there, Ruben. Yep. Um, yep. Somebody, there's a couple people, uh, Trent and Benny made uh, a request to um, hear about the torque ramps. Some people were surprised to see that yeah. uh, we have a Vortex torque ramp. So you want to just... Yeah, so little, uh, perfect opportunity. Awesome. So... This is the Vortex Torque Wrench. Um, it's, it comes in a nice kit, you know, water sealed, um, and I've obviously taken the torque wrench out to use it, but it comes with a set of bits. You know, pretty much every Vortex mount is covered in this set of bits. You've got, you know, um, Torx bits, you've got socket drives, you even have a, a socket in there for doing some of the mounts that have a, a nut on the side of them. So this is available, um, vortexoptics.com. I believe they're around 60 bucks. Don't quote me on that. But they're a really cool tool um, because they're adjustable all the way from, I believe, 7 inch pounds up to 50. So as you guys know, we really stress the importance of using a torque wrench when you're installing a, a scope. And we wanted to make it easier for you guys. So again, you buy a Vortex mount, you buy a Vortex scope, get the torque wrench tool. You, you're going to use it for building ARs. You're going to use it for putting mounts on pistols, installing scopes. I use mine about every day. So that's the torque wrench kit. Order it right on the website. And I'm going to need this, so I don't know why I was putting it away. So next we're going to jump into how to get a red dot on my factory pistol. I don't want to modify anything. I don't want to cut the slide up. I want to be able to, you know, hand this gun down someday and have it be back to factory condition. So nothing permanent here, all right? So what I've got is I've got a Glock 34 slide. Um, it's my, I use it for shooting USPSA. Um, it's a stock slide. There's really nothing done to it. I don't want to change it because the division I shoot doesn't allow me to change stuff. So move over here. We're going to go to the vice. We've got a, a sight pusher tool. I believe it's from sight tool.com sightpusher.com thanks Jimmy so this is a product that I really want to stress is easy and effective so Evolution Gunworks makes a dovetail mount and that's how we're gonna mount to the slide without making permanent modifications but we want to have a really really solid option give the guys over at EGW a call as you know if you've called into Vortex we love the EGW product we push it really hard every day because we believe in it and we believe in the way they treat their customers. So um, they make them for, um, it'll say doctor site, but again, like I mentioned, that's the Viper and the Venom mount. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to mount a razor to this Glock 34 because that site is really popular with competition shooters and um, it's a really, really cool install. You don't need the sight pusher tool. I'm using it because they're super effective. They're really, really easy to use, and you don't mar up the slide. You're not hammering on anything. So what I've done is I've knocked out the old sight using the sight pusher tool. I've mounted up my Glock 34 slide, and what I'm going to do, I just got a socket wrench. 
I'm going to ratchet this sight mount in place. So I've pushed up the pusher against the mount, and what I do is I just simply push it into the dovetail. And this is not something where you'll know when it's perfectly centered. You kind of have to eyeball it. Um, but these, these mounts are awesome, and I've been a huge fan of them, especially if you ever want to you know, take a, take a pistol out, you want to shoot with it at the range, but then maybe later you want to hunt with it, and you want to use a red dot for hunting. So I've got that, um, feels like it's pretty centered up. So I'll knock that out. Loosen up the slide, back off the pusher tool, make sure my slide doesn't fall on the ground. It's got that installed there perfectly. So going back over here to the workbench, um, there is a set screw in these, uh, in these sight mounts. So what you want to do, I usually put Loctite on. I'm going to take this off later, so I'm not doing it now. But again, kind of that 10 to 12 inch pounds, I'm going to just tighten that set screw, which is going to prevent the sight from walking left to right. I've got it torqued in there. Um, as you can see, it now gives me a base to mount the sight to, much like those optics ready pistols. But again, non-invasive, not permanent, and it will not cost you very much. I think they're about 40 or 50 bucks. So question coming in. Hey, uh, so Ruben, um, I was talking with uh, Ryan Willis here, and he brought up um, mounting a dovetail mount on a 1911. And I know there's a lot of other pistols besides Glocks that will have dove, uh, a dovetail mount potential. Can you talk about the different rear sight cuts? And so, yeah, works? super good question. So that was Ryan. <clears throat> As you know, pistols have been around for 100 years plus. Um, there's there's going to be a bunch of different sight cuts, right? So kind of like I mentioned with the EGW mount, this one says specifically for Glock. Glock uses their own dovetail cut. And what a dovetail cut is, as you probably know, it's kind of a, a triangular-shaped um, cut, which allows you to put a mount in. It's kind of a friction fit. It's not going to come out this way. It'll come out this way, which is why we use the set screw. But there's a ton of different dovetail cuts. You know, there's Novak, there's um, <clears throat> Bomar, there's LPA, there's Kimber, there's 19, uh, 1911 mil standard, which is like a, an older cut. You find that a lot on, on a lot of 1911s. Um, there's Sig uses uses their own proprietary one. You have Smith and Wesson. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head which one they use. Springfield uses their own cut. So there's a ton of different dovetail cuts, and when I say cut, it's the profile of the cut. One might be wider, one might be narrower, one might be shallower, one might be deeper. But you'll need to buy the right dovetail mount for the gun you have. If you can't find it online, give the gun manufacturer a call and just say, hey, I have X gun, I want to know which dovetail cut that this came from the factory with, and then Jim over at Evolution Gunworks will get you into the right mount. Um, there are a few other companies that make mounts like that. You've got Springer Precision, Strike Industries, good friends of ours. Um, and then there's uh, Burris. So Burris actually makes a ton of mounts. And I've found that if you can't find it from somebody, which EGW makes a ton of them, and they got like 99% of your bases covered, but Burris also has a lot of good mounts. So check them out as well. So moving in closer here. We've got the Glock slide, which we've installed the EGW mount on. We've torqued it into place. And now the cool part about EGW is when you buy the mount, it'll tell you what sight it's for and what gun it's for. And they've already gone ahead and included the right screws that are the right depth and the right thread pitch. So on the bottom of the razor, there's these two indexing studs. So that's where these studs will go into, or indexing holes, where the studs will go into. You'll set that right on there. It mounts up pretty much fail-proof. Really no way to do it wrong unless you mount it backwards. Insert the screws, get them started. And one thing I always like to do is make sure that as I tighten the screws down, I do it somewhat slowly. Um, and then I, once I got them a little bit snug, I make sure that those studs are in place. You'll see that the optic fits the profile of the mount perfectly. So I know it's on there straight. I get to that you know, 12 inch pounds level, torque the screws, and now I've got my trusty Glock 34, which doesn't have a permanent modification now, but I've got a really solid mount 
for a razor red dot or a viper or a venom red dot, whatever option it is you're using, slap this on the gun and it's little it's plug and play. Put it on the gun, go to the range, get it zeroed, shoot it. So that's one really cool thing that I would say EGW with their mounts have made a really affordable option for anybody who doesn't want a permanent modification to their pistol, um, but they want to be able to use a red dot. So moving along, those are kind of the slide mount options. We covered the, the optics ready pistols, covered a, a full custom slide, we covered a factory gun that got modified, and then we covered a, uh, just a factory gun that we really didn't want to make permanent modifications to. Brings us to a couple of other options. Again, not permanent, not mo making modifications to the gun, non-invasive, I guess you would say. Um, you got the ALG Defense 6 second mount, this purple job here. These are really cool. Um, and then you've got the UM tactical mount. So both of these options are extremely, extremely cool um, and very affordable and, you know, quite honestly, a really solid way to mount them. So keep those questions coming, guys. Um, we want to make sure that we get them all answered. And Jimmy will be, you know, hopefully typing responses as we go along here and throughout the rest of the day. But if you guys have any other questions, make sure you shoot them over to me. So first off, the six-second mount. Now, this mount is offered for um, the Aimpoint T1 base, which is our Spark 2 also fits the Aimpoint T1 base pattern. And then it's also offered for the Trigicon RMR. Um, they don't have options right now for the Burris uh, Doctor mounting pattern, but hopefully someday we'll see those because I know this is a really good mount. Um, this mount gives you the opportunity to bolt directly to the frame. So it installs really easily. You're going to knock a couple of those trigger pins out, which is very easy to do. Um, once you've got that done, you mount the optic to the mount, and there's four screws on the bottom that do that. There's very detailed instructions that come with this mount as well, so um, <clears throat> don't have to take notes during this. But this mount is really cool. I think one cool part about it, it's got a blast shield here. This blast shield prevents powder um, and any, any smoke or flash from the muzzle coming up and really covering the lens of the optic. It also protects it. Um, so this mount bolts in. It'll slide right onto your accessory rail, um, and then it bolts through the frame. So looks like we got another question coming in. Yeah, so a good question, Anthony. I know not everybody wants purple. Uh, I know they do come in black. Uh, they could come in other colors. I'm not sure. Okay, so it sounds like they're probably available also in like a, a, a wolf gray or something and then a tan. So, yeah, there are other options out there. Um, this, this optic, a lot of people would look at this and they would say, well, why do I want a, you know, a Spark II or a, you know, an Aimpoint that size of a dot on a pistol? It's kind of you know, not practical for carrying, or maybe it's just really big. Well, these types of optics are really, really durable. They also have smaller dots. So I would tell anybody, you know, if you if you had your favorite trusty pistol and, and a 10 mil or something like that, and you wanted to take it out deer hunting, you don't want to make permanent modifications to the gun, but hey, for a couple months out of the year, I want to mount a red dot to it so I can, I can hunt with it. This is a perfect option for doing that. You can mount it up. And then when you're done with it, you can take it off. It's also a really, really solid mount. So I know like the return to zero, the durability of them is phenomenal because it bolts tightly directly to the frame, has two points of contact. Matt wants to know how well will it mount to an MMP shield. So this right now, this ALG mount is available for Glock. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head if it's available for every different pistol on the market. But moving right along into a mount that will work with different pistols, um, the UM tactical mount. So this is a really, really cool mount in the, in the way how it mounts. So you'll take the mount. It has a, a kind of a quick release button there. It slides onto your accessory rail. So it's adjustable. You can have it further forward, further back if your pistol has multiple uh, accessory slots. And then this mount clamps together in the top. So when you put the optic on it, you're actually tightening the mount on the gun and you're mounting your optic. So the nice part about this mount, 
Um, you don't need to take your factory sights off. I actually have pretty tall competition sights on this gun. You don't need to take the sights off. Um, there, there's like a, a groove right down through the top that actually allows you to then use your sights if your optic ever failed, which um, in real life applications can happen. So this mount would actually probably work really well as long as your shield has an accessory rail. There really wouldn't be any reason why it wouldn't work. These are they boast a really good return to zero, so you can take the mount off and the return to zero will be there. So you're not worried about every time you take it on and off, you know, checking your zero. I always recommend checking it if it's a critical application or if you're hunting, but if you're just target shooting, you shouldn't have to re-zero every time. So guys, keep those questions coming. If there's anything we can answer for you online here, we will. Otherwise, just keep shooting them through throughout the day. Um, that kind of, I guess, really more or less sums up the different options. Um, Jimmy, do you have another question come in? So when you're, when you're looking at buying a pistol, if you don't already have it, now you should have the, you should have the options, the different ways that you can mount a red dot. Um, I guess one thing that for me is, is important is application. So what am I going to be using the pistol for? Is it my competition gun? Is it my everyday carry? What really is, what's the application of the gun? So looking at something like the Q5 match over here, this new gun from Walther is really cool. Um, but there's, there's no co-witness opportunity with this. So this probably isn't going to be your everyday carry gun, right? This is your competition gun. So the co-witness thing isn't important there. And keep in mind, these are awesome guns, and everyone has kind of a different purpose. So then go into, you know, your FN45 tactical. This one is a real duty-driven, you know, duty-driven gun. These ones are really popular with the military and law enforcement communities. The, you know, it's a 45, so it's it's a bigger cartridge. It's a double stack 45. These things come ready to go out of the box. Slap a, a Venom or a Razor Red Dot on it, and there's nothing else you need to do. This one also has, you know, a suppressor-ready barrel. So thread off your thread protector, and you're good to go. Um, put a suppressor on it, and that, you know, hopefully will fit your application. So, Jimmy, what's the question? Um, so, uh, Brian Faber, I want to say, wanted to know real quick, uh, it looks like he's got an MOS. Which of those plates that come with the MOS will work with the Razor? Perfect. So, the... Brian. Awesome question. The razor will fit on the MOS. It is tight up to the front, so the front of the si the slide cut is tight up to the the front of the optic, but it fits perfectly. I've probably mounted about 25 of them. Never had an issue. You just do need to make sure that when you when you mount the plate, you'll use plate number three, and then you'll give us a call here at Vortex. You'll get the screws for the razor. Just call up our customer care department. Say, hey, I need the Glock screws for the Razor. Um, and they'll, any one of our fine customer care folks will know exactly what you're talking about. They answer these questions every day. So they're going to send you the right screws. And, hey, if you know you're getting the gun and you're getting the optic, give us a call ahead of time so that you have it all there when, you, when you're ready to install it. So mount plate number 03. And that's going to be on the 45, on 9 mil and 40 models. And then if you do have the 10 mil, the wide frame, you're actually going to use, it'll come with plate 5, 6, 7, and 8. So 5 is the same as plate number 1, and 7 is the same as plate number 3. So if you were mounting a razor to a 10 mil Glock MOS, you need to use plate number 7. You'll then just install plate number 3, make sure that that's tight. Again, the, the Glock screws come with pre-applied Loctite to apply or to, to secure the base to the slide, um, but the screws that we're going to send you don't. So you don't need to install it. But if it's a permanent application, I always just say, you know, why not? Keep in mind, you don't want to over torque it, but there's really no nothing wrong with applying Loctite. So, Jimmy, question? Yeah, we got one more here, kind of as we're starting to wrap up. It's from Ben Squire, and he said, what is Ruben's favorite handgun that he owns? <clears throat> Oh, that's a tough question. Ben, okay, what, what's the favorite handgun that I own? Um, well, I, it, it depends on the application. I don't have, like, a definite favorite. Um, 
for a three gun, I've shot Glock and I've shot STI. Right now, I've been shooting my STI. I got a DVC three gun a lot, so I, I or I shoot that a lot. Um, I've shot uh, Glock 34s for you know 12,000 rounds a year and matches for the last five or six years. So I really I'm used to shooting those. I have Smith and Wesson. Um, uh, got a Springfield XD. I don't know. They're all kind of favorites. It's hard to it's hard to pick, but awesome question. So, <clears throat> all right. So last question. Yep. There, Ruben. So a lot of people in Vortex Nation are wondering about the uh, PG water on the table. So that's okay. That's another thing. So Fiji water. Go back and watch the shot happens video from a couple years ago. You'll understand. But I do only drink Fiji water. It gets expensive, but that's. It's my cross to bear. So that's about everything today, guys, from uh, the manual machine shop here at Vortex. I want to keep in mind, too, we're going to be doing more of these live events. So we want to know what you guys want to see at Vortex. Who do you want to see? Who do you want to meet? What do you want to see done? So shoot us, uh, you know, info at Vortex Optics. That's our email. You could, you could comment on Facebook posts. We're always replying to Instagram comments, Facebook comments. You can hit us up on Twitter. Um, Heck, we're even thinking about starting a Snapchat. I don't know. Jimmy's a little sketchy on that, so we'll see on Snapchat. But um, you can always shoot me an email, rallexon at vortexoptics.com. Our phone number is 800-426-0048. Hit extension 5, you'll get sales and technical. One of us will pick up. Um, but again, we really want to know what kind of live events you guys want to see and what you want to see from Vortex in the future for videos. So definitely hit us up. Let us know. We really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks again, and uh, have a good day.